Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So, I just got back from the range testing a new composite fabric out. I wanted to see if this could actually be used in body armor. It's not one that's ever, to my knowledge, been used in body armor. And that is uh, the fabric that I'm referring to is Vectron fabric. It's more commonly used in certain aerospace applications, lighter than air aircraft like blimps, as well as uh, puncture resistant tires, uh, some spacesuits, a few different applications because it has very unique properties with uh, thermal uh, expansion, like it doesn't have creep or very low creep. It's very stable at high temperatures. It's radiation resistant. There are just a bunch of different things that make it uh, have some unique properties. I actually originally bought it in hopes that I could make it uh, stab resistant cloth. If you've seen my previous video on stab armor that I'm developing, this was one of the fabrics I purchased specifically for that. Sadly it didn't actually, this grade wasn't any better than the Kevlar or the Spectra and honestly Kevlar was the one that shined the most, the Kevlar that I used. And, uh, but I still figured, why don't we test it against ballistic threats? So I laminated up two plates, right? Eight by eights. They were very, very light, very thin profile, 14 layers thick. And was able to stop a nine millimeter, 38 special, and a 40 cal, multiple shots from those three calibers, full metal jackets and hollow points. And it, did remarkably well. I mean, no penetration, you know, multiple shots. And honestly, those plates are lighter than what they would have been if I used Kevlar, ballistic grade Kevlar. So that's pretty amazing. So uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'll show you guys the test footage first with my friend Flash and I out at the range. Then I'll actually show you how I made these because it was a very simple process of just laminating up these 14 layers. And then I'm going to go into what I'm going to use these for in the future because I have a lot of this fabric and I think it's probably going to be used in my shield that I'm building as well as some other plates for plate carriers that I'm working on. So the next step after these is going to be actually testing it with other materials. So I'm really excited about that. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into the test footage and the build. All right, so we're out at the range today. Just doing a few tests real quick. I'm here with my buddy Flash. You probably remember him when he was hitting me over the head with uh, sticks and other stuff from my hat build. Yeah. Yep. So what we're gonna start off shooting today is with this 38 Special Charter Arms. And then we're also going to be using a 9mm. This is a Kimber 1911. Uh, shoots 9mm full metal jackets. It's a sweet pistol. And then we also have the Taurus P101 uh, shooting 40 caliber rounds. And that's the one I'm really hoping to stop today. So it should be exciting. All right, let's get to it. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah, I'd aim real low on that. <laughs> yeah. A little high. It nailed it. It hit something. I don't know if it was high enough that it just knocked it down. Yeah, I just put the top. A little high. Hi. There you go. There that go. was center of mass. 40. Cool. Yeah, so we'll do the 9 and then the 40. All right. All right, so with the nicer plate, full metal jackets, 9 millimeter. Yep. All right. Nice. Nice. 
nice. Nice, nice, nice. And that's with the cheap resin. Same fabric though. Badass. Let's step up real quick to the 40. All right. There you go. There you go. Better resin. Yep. It's holding together better too. All right. Cool. I just want to see this. 40? Yep, this, this is the 40 cap. You nailed it. Man, this guy is such a smooth, like... Like, it surprisingly less recoil. Oh, yeah, that does... The worst thing I have for recoil reasons is that 38. Timber. Okay. Oh. Stay to the camera, see if I can see. There you go. Take a shot out. So Alright, so there was all the test footage from the range. Sadly, I completely forgot and spaced bringing my little tripod, so the close-up camera was sitting on the ground on this little uh, block of clay that I had. Um, I did back these with ballistic clay, the type 1 Romana clay that I use, but it's an old sample of it and it just kind of fell apart as we were testing so I couldn't really test or see the back face deformation on it because it just it's been used so much that it just broke apart. Yeah, and honestly I should have thought and planned out that testing a little bit better because I went between the two plates switching between the different calibers and I imagine it kind of look, to me it looks a little confusing, you know, because it's like we w did the 38 special, then we did the 38 special on the other plate, then we went to the 9 on each plate, and then the 40 cal on each plate. And then I also hit it again with the 9 uh, uh, millimeter on this plate. So, sorry for that. My next tests that I do in the future, I'm going to plan out and maybe record from different angles and that sort of thing so but either way I'll uh I'll show right now how to build these plates and then we will examine these a little bit more in detail and try to pry some of these bullets out to take a look at them so all right let's get to it all right I already started tracing out I'm going to be doing eight by eights you can see I went ahead, took the square, right? Took a sharpie. Got to work on tracing it. Gonna just be using my normal Kevlar shears, right? And we're gonna be doing 15 layers, 14 to 15 layers of this Vectron fabric to see if it can stop a bullet. We're gonna be doing a real simple emanation with some cheap resin as well. We'll get to cover that when we get to actually laminating it. So I guess let's start. I actually want to start over there on this side. Yeah, let me see if I can't. You can see how reflective the surface is. Like I said, here's a piece of Kevlar, right? Here's a piece of this Vectron. Very pretty fabric. So anyways, imagine you guys don't really need to see me cut up all these layers, so I'll get back with you after all this is done. Alright, so I got the 14 layers cut. I decided to go with 14 just to round it out rather than jumping up to 15. It was easier with the fabric length and the cutoffs to just get 14 out of it. What I have prepared here is I got four clamps, took some pieces of wood, 
that are from another project I'm work currently working on and wrapped them in some polyethylene just tarp like tarp material super thin uh, polyethylene is very unreactive it doesn't react to a lot of resins but either way on top of that I'm just laying a sheet of vacuum bagging uh, material which has a silicone coating on it which is used for lamination so just in case that plastic does decide to stick to this resin just going to use the Bondo fiberglass resin the cheapest resin you can get on the market pretty much I mean the stuff gets the job done so 14 layers that resin I'm thinking with this fabric because of how thick it is I'm going to need a lot of resin and that's another reason why I use that rather than uh, some of my nicer resins because I'm saving those back for very specific projects and this is more of a, an experiment to see how this uh, fabric holds up you know so I'm thinking man we're gonna need 14 layers I'm gonna start with we'll start with well let's see how much we can fit into the cup because the hardener is 10 drops per ounce and depending on how much I can fit into this cup we will go from there well, this resin isn't bad, I've had it for quite a few years I round out to 9 Right over, right over, there we go. Nine ounces. It still smells like resin. Oh, I just, it just looks darker than I remember. Hmm. It's like it got contaminated with anything. Alright, so, so it'll be 90 drops of that. Alright, so I went with nine ounces of resin for this plate, but after seeing that I had a lot of access resin, I decided to go with only six ounces with the Max Bond resin. Um, when you're stirring resin that has just like the small droplet catalyst or uh, hardener, you should really make sure to use a stick rather than like let's say your brush. And the main reason is sometimes the hardener will get stuck in the bristles and will be a lot more active on the first coats you do and not as much on the lesser or the last coats it doesn't mix right is what I'm trying to say so make sure to use a stick or something when you're mixing up your resin and stir really well scraping the sides as you can see I'm doing just a traditional simple wet up lamination pretty much just applying resin in between the layers and then adding more then another layer of fabric so on and so forth until I have the composite fully made up but I'm also compressing it between two boards which I'll show you with these clamps to help mitigate uh, void spots and making sure that it's even and consistent through the whole plate and it worked very well on both of the plates that I did it you could use vacuum bagging equipment but I'm saving that for the larger plates and shield that I'm doing so I want to conserve that material so there we go there goes the resin that's what I expected Starting to squeeze out some as we paint this stuff down. And see it dripping out. Starting to drip out from in between the fabric. So we give a little bit more. That should be good. Let's stick it in the old cure box. There we go. 
Oops. So, nice and hot. Bam! Right in the center. Center of my... Let that sucker heat up. Check back in the morning. All right, so it's the next day. Let's go ahead and remove the clamps and see how well everything cured up. Been all night in the cure box. Very excited to see how it turned out. Ooh, boy, it's getting cold up here where I live. Got a bunch of snowfall. So, got this little propane heater and makes a world of a difference. All right, yeah, see? That's why you use those plastics, right? Beautiful, beautiful fabric. Whew. See if we can't just kill this sucker right. Look at that. That's why you use that, uh, that uh, vacuum bagging uh, plastic. Is that right there? Just comes right off of molds. So nice. Excess resin, pretty stiff, wet out pretty well, a little bit didn't get in the corner there, all in all the rest of it laminated perfectly. So we will trim her down, go out and see how well this will hold up in comparison to Kevlar. So this is 14 layers of this Vectron fabric, cheap resin, super cheap resin. As you can see, <laughs> just cracking away here on the edges. So the resin itself isn't going to give too much uh, strength to the uh, composite. It'll hold it, the fibers together and all that. But all right, so I will clean this up and go out and shoot it. I'm excited to see how this works. It's light too. I should mention that. 14 layers. Let's go ahead and weigh it out real quick. I can't remember how much resin I used off here, but just before trimming, 16 ounces. So, it's a really, you know, it's like in that, yeah, it's almost big enough to be a, I mean it's only an 8x8, but it's almost big enough to be what an insert would be, very thin profile, so that's kind of cool. All right, anyways, let's get to trimming this up. Oh, cold. <laughs> and we'll go shoot it. All right, so there you have it. I mean, I was able to stop, was it two, four, five, about six rounds. I mean, one of them was just to graze with this plate with the, the Max Bond resin. I'll put a link in the description for the resins and the fabric so you guys could try to order it and maybe build something out of it yourselves. Like I said, I will be using this fabric in future builds because it did exceptionally well. It's about on par with Kevlar that I've used in the past. And, uh, you know, I started dissecting this plate, peeling the, the plies apart to look at the different bullets and how far they made it. The 9mm full metal jacket actually went in a little bit deeper than the others. I think it's mostly because it was shot right next to where the 38 Special hit. And that was literally stopped two layers shy of going through. So that one was pretty close. The other 9 didn't. There was no problems with that one stopping. That was a lot higher up. But yeah, I mean... And this was a very thin, that's probably my favorite part about this is when it was compressed down with the clamps and everything, it became a very thin uh, composite, man. And it makes me wonder if I jumped it up instead of just doing 14 layers because this one was so light, what if I did it like 24 or even like 30 layers? I mean, it would be considerably thicker, obviously, but... That really was, wasn't was thick at all to begin with, so what happens if it's, you know, that thick? Could it actually stop a rifle around by itself? 
and it would still be remarkably light. So, anyways, this will you guys will see this more on the channel in the future, probably for the shield. I'll probably use the majority of it because I need a lot to build up layers for a shield. You know, that's a lot of material is going to go into that. So, this material will probably be one of the main ones. But you'll also see it on the next build that will be coming up, which is my HDPE plates. I've literally cut up 40 milk jugs in preparation, and I've got seat belts, I've got metal, I've got ceramics, I've got Kevlar, and Vectron fabric, and nylon, so I'm going to be wrapping them, doing mix and matches for that. Plenty of those plates are going to be viewer suggestions, like using seat belts and a few other things. So if you guys like this sort of content, please uh, like, share, subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the little bell so that way you get notifications. I do a weekly update, so even if I don't post a video or a project, I still show you guys um, what I'm working on. And, you know, I'm also going to do polls on projects you guys want to see finished. So, anyways... That was, whoop. Don't knock that off. That was a success, man. Look at that uh, 40 cal. Special thanks to my friend Flash for coming out and bringing his 40 cal. That was a fun gun to shoot, man. And there's the full metal jacket 9mm. Right? You can see how much bigger that bad boy is. It's a beefy round, man. Alright, guys. and See you in the next one. Later.